Hello everybody, Assassinator back with another Xbox news video letting you know everything that's happened in the world of Xbox over the last week or so. So this week was another slow week in the world of Xbox, but let's go ahead and get started with the biggest news and the reason why you probably clicked on this video. I like putting the main big topic first so that anyone who's interested in it can see that and then move on if they don't want to know the rest of what's been happening with Xbox. So this week Xbox announced that there will be an exclusive theater presentation for Starfield. So let me tell you a bit more about the event that will be taking place at which is Gamescom. Gamescom will be running from August 23rd to August 27th and Xbox will be attending. Xbox has even given out information about what to expect from them which is their largest booth at a Gamescom yet, Xbox Fan Fest for those people who are attending, exclusive theater presentation for this year's highly anticipated first party games which is Starfield and Forza Motorsports, games like Towerborn, Stalker 2, Party Animals and more will be playable. A total of about 30 games will be playable including Cyberpunk 2077's expansion will also be at that booth. Xbox presentation will also be live streamed. Now this will definitely be a show to look out for. Gamescom is about a week before Starfield launches, and I know the official release date is September 6th, but with early access being on September 1st, I count that as the actual release date. I'm thinking that what Xbox shows during Gamescom as far as Starfield goes should be pretty good as it will probably be the last thing that you see for Starfield before launch. And Xbox Bethesda will probably want to entice those people who are still on the fence about playing the game. Now I've seen on social media some doom and gloomers aka anti Xbox squad saying that no demo being at Gamescom is a cause for concern, that the game must not be good, that they don't want to let people try it out. I feel that the reason for this would probably be to keep the big wow moment under wraps. So we get all experience for ourselves rather than it being revealed in an article or maybe a potato phone video. So me personally, this is a non-issue. Some other good news came out that you can now order parts from Microsoft to repair your Xbox controller. This option is only available in the United States right now as I create this video, but it should be expanding to other regions in the future. This will cover parts for the Xbox Series controls and the Elite version 2 controller. Now Xbox even released a couple of how-to videos to help anyone out who wants to try this for themselves. You'll be able to fix things like stick drift, the peeling of the grips, the bumpers not working properly, and much more. This is the first step in the Xbox community getting the right to repair. I'll say that for me personally, the parts are pretty expensive and I'd rather just buy another controller rather than have to deal with pulling it apart and then rebuilding it again, hoping that it actually works properly. But it's a positive nonetheless. Well now that I'm talking about Xbox controllers, I might as well let everyone know that Xbox has a new controller color releasing soon. Right now, you can pre-order the Stormcloud Vapor Special Edition controller, which releases on August 8th, so only a few days from now. The design is new and I expect Xbox to release other color variants with the same exact Cloud Vapor design in the future, because that's what they do with most other controls. A bonus is for those people who buy the controller, if you plug the controller into your Series X, it will unlock a Stormcloud Vapor dynamic background. Now this dynamic background looks very similar to the controller's design as far as the clouds go, the color and everything, but it just has that cloud moving a little, uh, just a little bit. Now Xbox has been doing this with a few of their other controllers and it's a nice added bonus. But for game theme controllers, they should add in-game content, kind of like they did with Sea of Thieves and the uh, Forza Horizon 5 controllers. Sadly, there was no in-game content provided with the Starfield controller. Now as far as game theme controllers, I hope that the next one is for Forza Motorsports which is releasing pretty soon so I expect within I would say a month, a month and a half to actually hear about that controller, probably even sooner because it seems like they're releasing the controllers before the games when those type of things happen. I don't know why they don't release more game theme controllers alongside their first party launches. They did give us Starfield this year along with the Design Lab Redfall. But hopefully it continues because even if they do a limited quantity, they will sell out. Now I personally don't like the way they did the Design Lab Redfall controllers as I mostly keep mine sealed and displayed. The outer box for Design Lab controllers don't show off the controller that's inside nor is there a window to see what's inside. Would mean I would have to basically take mine out of the box to display it and that's not really what I want to do. So basically what I did was I just purchased one of them and I'm passing on the rest. And I'm passing on the rest, but if they would have actually had the image on the outside of the box or a window into it, I probably would have bought all five of them. 
So that's enough about controllers. Let's go ahead and talk about the games. The games that will be coming to Game Pass at the first half of August. So we have on August 1st, which has already passed, so it's already out, which is Celeste. Then we have August 3rd, again, already out, which is a short hike. Then on August 8th, we get Bro Force Forever. August 9th, we get Limbo. August 10th, we get Airborne Kingdom. And August 15th, we get Everspace 2. Now, just like last time, every time we get more games, we got games that are leaving. So we have four this time, and as you can see on screen, the list right there. To me, none of these stand out, especially with two of them being PC only, and I don't play games on my PC. Now, that's going to be it for this week. Again, like I said, not really a whole lot going on. I did put out a Monday video, so if you missed that one, go ahead and check that out, because that wrapped up everything from Friday to Monday, and now I'm giving off everything from Tuesday to Friday. So everyone have a good rest of your weekend, and until next time, Assassinator out.